next speaker, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's Neil Peterson. Neil Peterson is an entrepreneur. He's a mentor and he's the founder and CEO of Real Estate uh, Magazine. He's a, he's a serial entrepreneur within the property space. He advises um, individuals with property developers and uh, in relation to uh, the property trends we are seeing in South Africa right now. He also advises individuals in uh, emerging trends, key trends to, to look out for uh, in, in South Africa, where to buy, what to avoid. So he will take us through uh, his, his brilliant mind and what we can do uh, if we are interested in investing in, in, in the property. Ladies and gentlemen, please do help me to welcome the amazing Neil Peterson. Thanks very much for such a wonderful introduction there. Uh, um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity uh, to house it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit, I think uh, this is a slightly different audience, which I normally address because it's normally the, you know, the real estate industry directly, you know, the property developers, investors, um, whether it's in commercial um, and uh, or whether it's sort of in the residential sector. But uh, but essentially, they, they all are intertwined. And uh, so, um, you know, it's something that you I don't think you can actually, you know, get away from the industry that, you know, it's made up of, of many pieces, you know, whether it's residential, commercial, and we even operate in offshore space for investors looking for stock to invest. So the investor landscape tends to be quite broad because uh, there are just so many opportunities and obviously the opportunities are driven first and foremost by you know what the returns can be given on 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 that kind of property so just yeah a little bit about myself myself i mean i've been uh, i'm a private investor and obviously we've been running a, a real estate platform you know for investors and also for the industry to to be able to upskill themselves to network uh, putting buyers and sellers together. And uh, we also use the best of breed technology. I mean, we've even uh, hosted events in the metaverse and use various other kinds of technologies. And uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity today. And I'm going to start off sort of with the sort of the economic, you know, how the, the macro economy is looking uh, in, in South Africa. And, and, and I don't want to sort of bore and depress everybody but i think we all kind of know but i just want to touch on some of the major touch points which impacts on real estate and impacts on our daily lives and uh, and we know that there is significant uh, pressure uh, economically whether it's in south africa and it's still because of the leftover of the pandemic it's high inflation and obviously the the ukraine war um which has driven in inflation Yes, we've got the ESCOM energy crisis that is impacting ourselves, our businesses, our investments and our industry, the construction industry we talk about that as a particular category. And it's still a major headache, And but we are seeing people are losing less of ESCOM, at least is a big focus to fix it. And, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, this will be dealt with. I mean, in the Western Cape, we're seeing uh, the local government here looking at uh, going completely off the grid, you know, that it could take a few years, but we're, we're, we'll see how that, that pans out. Um, we, of course, know that there's an election year next year. So this also impacts, uh, you know, our investments and everything else uh, uh, ourselves. So uh, we've got to be aware that there's going to be a lot of politicking and, you know, uh, we've got to be careful of what the news that we're getting out there. Um, and so we're entering a new era of coalition governments. And uh, and uh, so that's going to be quite interesting to see how that pans out and whether that does actually work out uh, well. Um, we're also seeing management uh, management of the state-owned entities, you know, municipalities collapsing. Um, I believe that creates massive opportunity for the private sector. So I think that's the only place where they're going to be able to turn. So I think for you in the construction industry, clearly that's that's an opportunity and should definitely be on your radar screen going forward. Um, the unemployment, we've seen slight improvements from back of COVID time. And uh, we saw Cape Town in particular has uh, had a massive increase in the tourism and hospitality sectors, 165,000 jobs. 
compared to 2000 nationally uh, that were created in tourism and hospitality sectors. Um, it's still a problem. It's not growing as fast as it should. Um, and we've got a rising tax burden with uh, certainly a smaller tax base. And, uh, and we've got a high debt burden and that's both, you know, uh, private uh, households and obviously public in terms of government and which means that we're paying higher interest payments, which becomes higher on the list of, of, of what we need to pay. And we're seeing weak uh, GDP growth, but we are seeing some stuff which is, um, which, uh, which is um, a tax relief on, on, on solar panels and that kind of thing. So if we start looking at what's the key economic uh, indicators, we'll see that uh, the GDP in the third quarter, those are the only figures that are available, that's of 2022, uh, grew by 1.6%, and that's a gross domestic product of the, all the goods and services sold over that period. The CPI, which is obviously inflation, 6.3%. Uh, Our exchange rate, as it currently is, still on the high side at 17.85. And of course, we had a recent 0.5% increase in our repo rate from 7.25 and prime rate. And that impacts everything um, in terms of investment and property. So yes, there's certain areas I think that, uh, that, that if you look at 10 year bonds, I mean, it's very difficult to get an 11% return on, on, on 10 year bonds. Okay, so let's look, look at the confidence index uh, overall. And, you know, I'm just talking about general stuff. I normally have more positive, more exciting stories to tell you, because I like the individual investor stories and working with the property developers themselves and looking at what they're doing and how they can become more efficient. But the current index indicates slightly less than 60% of respondents. So this is called to the FNB BR, uh, BR Civil Confidence Index. Uh, less than 60% respondents were dissatisfied with the prevailing business conditions. So we're seeing a confidence increase on the back of better activity. There's less constrained environment, which is all good news. And uh, Stats SA reported a 1.2% annual decline in real value of construction um, in, in, the, in the fourth quarter, uh, with a yearly contraction before of 3.1%, so which is a, an improvement. So we're seeing civil contractors experience significant margin pre pressure over the last few years, and that's starting to ease a little bit. And, uh, and according to FMB, there seems to be an increase in more tender activity in public sector, roads and water, which is all good news for you guys. And uh, yes, we're still seeing load shedding, which is strangling growth. So let's just talk a little bit about the property cycle because it hard impacts obviously construction, because I think that's quite important. And uh, so, and I use the uh, Ruder and Associates uh, sort, why is the property cycle so long? Because this is a key thing. And on the demand side, we have the irrational exuberance um, and uh, which near the peaks, which creates asset bubbles. And the worse the exuberance, the longer the recovery period. And uh, what happens is on that demand side, it ignores then critical cycles because we surmise you can't really go wrong with bricks and mortar, which, uh, which is not always correct. On the supply side, the development imperative is development teams always try and survive and they make a way. And we just have a way of how we do and how we develop. So building and construction um, has a very, very long uh, gestation period. And, the, and, and, and that's, that's, that's important to, to understand and the super durability of the building inventory. So if we start looking at prices relate to replacement costs, I and mean, if we look at nominal prices, which are actual prices, and we do see them fluctuate, but building costs are on a steady incline. And, uh, and if we look at sort of real prices over a period of time, um, and we can see that uh, they tend to get adjusted for inflation. Um, okay, so let's start looking more at the commercial trends and what's actually happening in the market sector right now. So commercial property is undergoing a period of rapid growth and change. If we look at where we came from in COVID-19 to where we are today, I think people decided, no, this is it. We, we're moving forward. Um, you know, we're taking this and it's been a tumultuous few years of high vacancies. I mean, we've seen in the center of Santon, in, particularly in the office sector, you know, um, how many, um, you know, how many vacancies they've had, it's up to 25% and, and that kind of stuff. So 
those are starting to improve. It hasn't been fixed yet, and there hasn't been a, a quick switch over to to all of a sudden back to the office. But uh, the trend is slowly, but but uh, very surely starting to to turn around. So there's certainly more industries which are resuming normal operations and uh, and workers are starting to return to the office. And, and, and most of that is because of the heavy load shedding. A lot of people are not geared up at home for load shedding, so they kind of return to the office. So the disruptions caused by this on uh, all three property classes are still experiencing um, you know, demand despite that uh, load shedding issue. So let's look at the office sector. Um, the Johannesburg node has suffered most during the pandemic and uh, tenants who previously downscaled or terminated leases are heading back in search of prime real estate to accommodate staff. I think this is, uh, this is also good news for the commercial property owner and, uh, and for the stock availability that we've had. We have seen a lot of office buildings do, being converted also into to residential. So, um, yeah, so, so we've mentioned the whole uh, load shedding and the impact on home backups and uh, the heightened demand for A-grade space in areas like Rosebank, Joburg, Cape Town, CDBD have definitely increased uh, on the up and uh, landlords uh, are starting to actually show scarcity of supply, specifically in Cape Town areas. So, so um, there's a rising rental prices, good news, offering landlords reprieve post-COVID-19 and given the rising costs we, we face um, all, every year, if you look at inflation year and year, picking up uh, dramatically. So uh, in Johannesburg, we've seen the uh, prime um, office market has been regaining ground and, it, and after having quite a, a long run, and, uh, and we're seeing particularly in the finance, legal insurance industries are more reliant on in-person work uh, for regulatory and security reasons. And that's why I think the need has, has kind of made a little bit of a comeback. Let's look at the, the industrial. It's a little bit of the darling of the, the, the commercial real estate industry at the moment. And, uh, and we see that uh, industrial property continues to be the front runner. Um, it's had the least number of vacancies uh, during the pandemic, you know, due to focus on logistics, supply chains, warehousing, and there's been an uptick uh, in demand for spec build properties in Joburg, Lindbergh Park, Longmeadow, the R21, Jet Park, and Western Cape and George. Uh, and that's mainly driven by sort of semigration. Demand has picked up uh, significantly. Um, for under you know underserved areas there certainly from a commercial industrial perspective there's also a vacuum left by landholders not developing in COVID years has created demand for good quality distribution centers we see the REITs are starting to do a lot of spec builds uh, Fortress, Equitus, Venprop all of them uh, which is all good news and uh, so we're seeing the demand for industrial property means that landlords certainly have the upper hand without a doubt. Um, and I think it was in the last Equitus, it was less than a percent vacancy, less than 1%. I think it was 0.5% for Equitus uh, in terms of vacancies, which just shows you the resilience and the, and the power of that particular uh, sector. So developments are being built and tenanted in strategic positions, and uh, there's still demand for that, but we've seen prices of rental jump considerably. And also build costs, as you well know, in this particular industry have uh, increased significantly. So let's just look a little bit at the residential trends and residential in certain areas are, you know, really performing exceptionally well, particularly in the Western Cape. And the market is highly resilient despite the economic headwinds and, uh, and even despite the interest rates and uh, inflation. So we believe that interest rates could have peaked now um, we're hoping that, you know, this is a trend that's been marked just post COVID that, you know, we started seeing a number of, uh, interest rate hikes and we're hoping that we are nearing the end of the period of inflation and, and that this is going to turn around. Um, we saw also government increased transfer duty to attract the first time home buyers and, uh, households can also apply for tax breaks for solar, making that more affordable. Um, we also seeing the first-time home buyer market is also growing 
uh, also with a large increase in female buyers. Uh, so that's a big, um, big trend that's happening. And home loan approvals have been dampened by interest rate hikes. It is a trend that does happen over that particular moment in time. And, uh, and the rental market is in big demand, especially in the Western Cape, driven largely by semigration, relocation, upsizing, downsizing, and uh, prices that have increased in coastal area. So as I mentioned, the biggest beneficiary has been the Western Cape simply because of superior service delivery, road infrastructure, but we've also seen the beneficiaries of Mossel Bay, George Neisner, Port Elizabeth and KZN. They're also the beneficiaries of semigration and the work from anywhere trend. Okay, so if we start looking at the national average and I'm, and I'm using the better bond prices, this is not necessarily the standard because it varies from database to database you're getting. But in relation to the approved bonds in 2022, these were the residential average prices that uh, from, from better bond with a national average of properties that were approved with 1.45 million. The Western Cape is 1.8 million, KwaZulu-Natal 1.5, Gauteng just under one and a half, and Mpumalanga, Northern Cape 1.25, and Eastern Cape just over a million, and Northwest just under. So do, these are just merely indicators of, of what's going. So there are other couple of trends. If we look at the Gen Z, we are the people born between 1990 and 2000. They're entering the market uh, at a rapid rate. It's a growing sector, and affordability is still key. And uh, But the, most of them are saying, according to a housing survey, are looking to get into the market, which is good news because, um, you know, we, we tend to find that your, your much long, younger millennial market tends to be more of a nomadic type market on the move and, uh, and not really interested in staying in one place and uh, investing. But uh, the one uh, sector just above that certainly are looking to, to get into the market, but specifically also with a purpose to rent out. So they're looking up for the lock and goes, they prefer sectional title and uh, and obviously mixed use development with amenities and that's surrounded with shops, entertainment options and all convenience and also sustainability focus, you know, so that's also becoming a key thing. So yeah, just some ideas on how to maximize renovation budgets with spiraling costs. And if you look at the current index, this is once again, I'm quoting the FMB BR, ER uh, Civil Confidence Index, uh, slightly less than 60% of respondents were dissatisfied with uh, prevailing business conditions, but it has in business confidence has increased in the back of debt activity. And Stats SA reported a 1.2% annual decline in real value of construction in Q4 of 2022 and a yearly contraction. And I mentioned some of these stats earlier on already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Okay, so in conclusion, because I'd like to get into the discussion points and that kind of stuff. I mean, pretty much I could talk about any sector of the market. We could talk a, a lot about many different things. Um, we've got different property platforms. You can go to our website. You can access our online content. So for those of you who want to uh, subscribe to our newsletter, it comes out once a week. Please do. You can just you know click on your QR code and you can, uh, you can sign up over there. And uh, you can subscribe to Real Estate Investor Mag. We've been around for 16 years. We report on what's happening in the industry. We keep up with the trends. Uh, we look for the investments with the investors. So yeah, sign up, for, join the community. Um, I'd like to get into an engagement and conversation with you. So, um, so I'm gonna hand you over to the team here at Hauser. And uh, so maybe you can take it on from here. I'm pretty much open for questions. So what I wanted to know, uh, Neil, because I mean, like you, you mentioned in your in your presentation that load shedding has had quite a huge impact in in, in the property industry. What do you suppose is is the level of investment that's required from each and every property developer? Either maybe in terms of percentage, you know, it could be maybe uh, let's say you you building you you starting up and you're just building maybe four to to eight units. What is the level of investment one needs to consider, you know, to be able to, to, to build a commercial property that is, you know, uh, load shedding resistant, you know, maybe um, I would say hypothetically, instead of using gas stoves, I mean, instead of using electricity stove, you use gas stoves or solar panels. Are you aware perhaps of, of that kind of uh, investment. Uh, Wavell, mm -hmm. I will just, uh, once Neil answers the question, then I will uh, give it on to you. 
Yeah, so Gary, I think that's a really tough one. I don't have those numbers. We'd need to have a QS here. All I know that is a lot of money in, whether it's in commercial or whether it's in residential, a number of developers have spent significant amounts of money on uh, generators, on, on trying to, to keep, just to keep the lights on. And uh, and we, we see it in the retail sector, for example, and I didn't touch too much on retail because but, uh, but certainly in retail, um, I looked at uh, ShopRite Checkers' annual results, which is, uh, I mean, they are major tenants of, of uh, retail properties around the country. And they spent a half a billion rand just on a diesel, uh, you know, in their last financial year, which is significant. So I can imagine if you talk about the, the type of investment that is required, I mean, certainly we're looking at solar. Solar is certainly something which is on everybody's radar screen. And there are obviously very different models for solar. And I think solar is going to start becoming the norm. Um, we've also heard in the Western Cape, um, Jordan Hill Lewis was saying that obviously they're trying to get, uh, you know, get the Western Cape, you know, it's not going to be an overnight process. It's going to take a couple of years to be less obviously reliant on Eskom and even totally, you know, non-reliant on Eskom. And there are initiatives in place. In terms of the actual cost, if you're going to per developer, I won't be able to, I think we need to sit down with the QSs and, it, and I think it varies from sort of development to development. But however, it now becomes something which I think is a valid point that we've got to start factoring into developments going forward. Um, so, so certainly, I think it is it, it is sort of a new cost center for for property developers today. I am aware of one development in the Eastern Cape, um, very successful one. It's a rural based development um, called Crossways, and and at Crossways they are completely off the grid. Um, they have their own water supply from the Finstardens Dam. They have uh, le le mostly solar. And, uh, and obviously because it's quite a small development at the moment and also in terms of sewerage. So they almost become like a standalone municipality, which is supplying services into that. So what they've done is they're the ones that will start um, obviously charging their, their owners and tenants um, from that, you know, so they almost become, as I say, the municipality as well as the property manager. So uh, I think that's the best answer I can give you this thing. Give it. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, we had a question from Wavewell. Wavewell, if you don't mind to come on video and engage with Neil. Hi, good morning, Neil. Um, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I just wanted to have, I just had a question quickly about um, the investment appetite in um, KZN, especially on the commercial side of things. Um, following the um, the civil unrest, the riots and whatnot in 21 and then 2022, the floods, etc. Um, there seems to have been a waning in um, the appetite uh, from the commercial sector, even from the banks themselves when, when it comes to the retail and commercial, commercial side of things, where big developments that have been planned prior to that um, have seen significant drops or possibly even like to about a third of the sizes of the, what they were intended initially. Um, is there anything that could boost the confidence of um, of that sector to then allow for um, for such things to to be remedied or at least to um, make people believe that maybe KZN isn't all that bad? Um, mm -hmm. It's not uh, going to be bad forever or um, at least have some faith that uh, things will turn around and um, some sense of a rule of law would be sustained for a um, reliable enough period for them to see returns for their investments. Well, well, it's an excellent question. And, um, you know, and there's not a quick answer there for, for KZN. Um, yeah, K, I think you've spelt it all out. You know, that unrest has really made that market really tough to invest. And if you talk about from a commercial perspective, Absolutely. You know, so that's put a lot of sort of uh, the confidence factor that has certainly been affected. Um, I think what we've got to remember is that property always goes in different cycles. So what we'll see with the Western Cape, because the Western Cape cannot accommodate the entire South Africa. We're already falling apart at the seams. So, you know, we can't have everybody emigrating. And I, and I think there's, there's definitely going to be a turnaround, both for KZN 
and and uh, in, in in karting but i don't think it's going to take a little bit of time before that that turnaround comes so getting back to kzn um you know there's uh, there's a lot of positives in that's happening in the sort of residential estate sector um if you start looking at property prices in in kzn in the south of kzn we're seeing that if the if you're going to buy a coastal property uh, anywhere in the country, you probably find the cheapest properties that are now available, and we're talking about plots and, and plot and build and that kind of stuff, in various estates. And this is also in the south, and we're not talking about the north of KZN. Some of them are just over five hundred thousand rand. I mean, there's no way you're going to find any sort of investment of that kind of that sort um, in any other area. We talk, and that includes the Eastern Cape. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, Port Elizabeth and those kind of, we, we talk about sea facing properties. And uh, so I think that's where the opportunity is. And, you know, it's in a lot of these uh, eco secure type of states, um, which I think could start driving people because there's still a lot of people that are working from home. So um, I think the commercial market will be much slower to recover. In KZN, um, I mean, obviously, a lot of it has to do with rule of law, as you mentioned, Wavell. I mean, remember, we got an election coming up next year, and unfortunately, you know, KZN, uh, we've seen what we've seen recently. The IFP has kind of, you know, gained a lot of ground, and that to me is a vote of no confidence in the current government at the moment. It says that they're not happy with the services that have been supplied. I, I would assume. And and so so yeah, there's not a quick fix. Um, I think it will turn around. I think there's going to be opportunities. Um, what it always is, you know, it creates opportunities for investors when markets are down. So whether you're looking at a building or whether you can you can bet your bottom dollar, demand is going to be low. So therefore, you can start, uh, you know, definitely looking at a at good opportunities there in KZN. So I wouldn't wouldn't write it off at all. I would actually. Probably look around and see where we can find some bargain properties there. Thank you very much, Neil. I think you actually hit it on the nail uh, with Eastern Cape because to my surprise, we heard from the Airbnb team who are going to be presenting tomorrow that actually Queenstown has got the highest demand of stays in, in South Africa. And I couldn't imagine because, you know, in my mind, I had always thought that possibly the metropolitan areas like Cape Town and Joburg and Devon, but not. But thank you very, very much, Neil. And we truly appreciate your kindness in allowing us a tea break. And um, I hope you have a fantastic day. No, thank you very much. And thank you for the invite. And thank you, everybody. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank